In this video, I want to talk about medicines, specifically the cost of medicines, the cost of innovation, the implications that that has across the world, and the impact the rollout of biosimilars has had for us in the field of IBD over the last 10 years. It's Saturday, May the 4th in the afternoon. It's 32 degrees here in Kuwait City. You'll find somewhere a bit cooler and then we'll chat about the cost of medicines in IBD in 2024. We can see that healthcare costs are constrained by four major issues. There are more people to treat, particularly with chronic non-communicable diseases, so cancer, as well as autoimmune diseases, as well, of course, to diabetes and obesity and hypertension and heart disease, for example. Second, each new generation of medicines is costing more. And that's specifically true for biologics, where the cost of innovation is high, the cost of manufacturing is also high. Third, there appears to be a limited scope to increase healthcare funding indefinitely. And finally, there is less finance for staff, salaries, pensions, for facilities, equipment, research and funding. Are there any fixes? Well, three fixes to sustainable healthcare are one, raise healthcare income by increasing taxes and co-payments. That is not popular. It's not politically uh, survivable, I guess would be a better word, in the medium to long term but it might be necessary. Two, reduce coverage and ration access to treatments. Well, we know this is a deeply unpopular and arguably unethical way to go. So three leads us to increasing healthcare efficiency, i.e., can you buy more health for the money? So let's think about this for a minute. How can you buy more healthcare for the money? Now, one of the most obvious ways for us to reduce uh, healthcare spend, uh, or rather to be more efficient, is to pay less for the medicines. And with generics, that's fairly obvious. We can make uh, chemically um, aspirin or azathioprine, for example, and it can cost just pennies once a patent is expired. And you just need to follow a recipe. Biologics has been um, slightly more complex, and it's been subject to a lot of scrutiny um, and ethical regulation. But we do now sit at the 10-year mark of biologic generics, or as we call them, biosimilars, um, with the first one having been infliximab, where the loss of exclusivity in 2014 led to um, the first biosimilar with CTP13. And it's interesting now, we've had 10 years of uh, biosimilar anti-TNF in the IBD field. And I think it would be fair to say this has been a truly revolutionary change for us. We already had the drugs, they were expensive, and we didn't know how to use them very well. As we started to learn that using effective drugs like anti-TNFs and IBD earlier on made bigger improvements, and escalating the dose to the appropriate dose led to bigger improvements again. We've been able to treat far more patients when they've needed with the drugs, and this has led to reduced um, symptomatology, or symptom burden on our patient, greater mucosal healing rates. That in turn has led to reduced surgeries, reduced hospitalizations, reduced disease progression. And we in Edinburgh have documented this all through the way in our cohort. We've done this for our first infliximab switch back in 2015, for our big adalimab switch in 2018, for our subsequent infliximab switches in 2020 and 2023. Um, and overall, we've seen the cost of these drugs plummet from around 10 to 12,000 pounds per year up to 20,000 pounds a year for dose escalated adalimab down now to less than a thousand pounds for a year of standard dose adalimumab with biosimilar, which makes it cost equivalent, and in some cases even cheaper than mesalazine therapy for UC. 
That's really quite staggering. And along the way, what have we seen as we have looked at the data that's come out for each molecule through the preclinical characterization and animal model testing into the phase three studies demonstrating um, similar efficacy in patients with one disease indication, extrapolation, the guidance, and then our own real world evidence that we have built locally across each step of the way and which many, many, many other sites have done so. And we now have evidence for biosimilars being the same as the reference biologics in terms of the effectiveness, in terms of the safety, and in terms of the immunogenicity. Importantly, we've seen no drop-off in any of those parameters when we look at switching from a reference by biologic to the biosimilar. So that could be Remicade to CTP13, it could be Humira to Amgevita, to name just uh, one of the now more than a dozen um, biosimilar adalimabs, but it can also be from biosimilar to biosimilar. And we've shown this with two biosimilar switches in adalimab, we've shown it with three biosimilar switches in infliximab, as have multiple others. So here in Kuwait, my message to the population here, as they face the introduction of biosimilars really for the first time in 23, 24, is this. Don't be afraid. We've been using these for a decade. They work the same as the reference biologic. There is no difference in safety or immunogenicity. And the cost savings are immense. And we can then reinvest those cost savings into our services. We can increase the access of patients to the biosimilar drugs themselves. And with early effective therapy, that makes a massive difference to what's going on to our patient population. And moreover, we can access um, newer therapies because we're being more responsible within our drug budget. And we are contributing to being sustainable. And I think probably as physicians acting ethically in terms of making sure that on a national level, and even on a global level, we can be in a position where drugs are getting to everyone. We're not having to ration healthcare because we are appropriately using the more cost effective of options when they are available. So that's it for me on uh, biosimilars from here in Kuwait City. There have been two ships in the background, both of which have been um, reconstructed or, or built as model replicas of original ships. The first one was just built a couple of decades ago. Now a conference center with a rather uneven floor there. I'm going to go and catch a bit of rest now. I've got a couple of hours before flying back to the UK, back home for Sunday morning. Hope you're enjoying these videos. Do subscribe if you're on YouTube. It will um, make the videos more vi visible to you as well as to others. It will increase what I can do with this channel. Um, and I will keep coming to you with these videos, suggestions in the comments. Um, thank you very much indeed for listening. Goodbye for now.